What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 jailbreak news update. So I know I haven't done one of these videos in quite some time and that's mainly because there hasn't really been any major news to talk about recently. However, over the past few days there has been quite a few things that have dropped that is worthwhile me making a video here. And unfortunately it's not all good news but we'll start things off on a high note because we do have Resident Evil 4 Remake successfully backported to run on jailbroken PS4s. So if you're looking forward to running Resident Evil 4, you can already run it now on a jailbroken PS4. So yesterday, CYB1K, who is known for lots of backport releases in the past, did post a screenshot showing the Resident Evil 4 start screen with the gold hen FPS counter in the bottom left hand corner, showing that it was running on a jailbroken PS4. And shortly afterwards, maybe a few hours or so, we actually got a fake package release of the backported version. So there is the full game and then there is the 1.02 update currently that you can install which contains the backport patch. So you just download and install the game as you can see me installing it here. And then you install the 1.02 update uh, with the backport patch on there and then that will allow you to run the game and you can successfully play it there on your jailbroken system for 9.00. I'm sure there'll be maybe other backport patches available soon or they may already be out at the time of you watching this video for some of the previous jailbreaks like 5.05 .05 as well so pretty awesome stuff even though there's not any new jailbreaks for the people who do have a jailbroken ps4 at least you can still access the latest games uh, on your jailbroken system so that's what we've got right there so moving on what about potential you know new jailbreaks is there any news on the horizon for any possible new exploits so there were a couple of things recently these are quite small to be honest so we did get this CVE posted here on GitHub, a free BSD stack based overflow. Again, free BSD is the base operating system that the PS4 and PS5 runs on. Uh, so I believe it's free BSD 9 for the PS4 and free BSD 12 for the PS5. So this particular vulnerability is done using the ping request. So, you know, when you normally ping a remote host and get a reply. So there is a vulnerability in that ping command, it seems. There's a particular function, the PR underscore pack function, uh, which copies the IP and ICMP headers received into stack buffers. So as you can see here, it says that that basically there is IP option headers following the IP header in either the response or the quoted packet. In the presence of IP options, the PR pack function overflows the destination buffer by up to 40 bytes. So it's essentially a buff overflow in this kind of ping command which could potentially lead to something. Buffer overflows are usually a good sign. A lot of the exploits we've had for PS4 have been based on like buffer overflow exploits for FreeBSD. However, because it is a kind of network uh, exploit, uh, typically these haven't really materialized into any kind of exploits previously. There was a previous exploit that also took advantage of some kind of network vulnerability, but unfortunately nothing ever came of that, nothing public anyway. So. I'm not really expecting this to turn into a exploit for the PS4 or PS5, but I thought I would mention it anyway because you never know, you know, some of these hackers are wizards, so you never know what they can come up with with new vulnerabilities. Now, there's also some people making a big deal out of this update as well. So there is a kind of bug fix that CTERT committed to the FreeBSD source here on GitHub. And uh, this looks like a pretty minor thing, to be honest, because, of course, if this could be turned into a, an exploit of some kind, then I'm sure CTERT, who is well known in the PlayStation hacking community and has done many bug bounty reports, successful bug bounty reports, where he's received $10,000 bounties from Sony. So if this was something that he could use to turn into a full exploit for the PS4 or PS5, it's more than likely that he would have actually done that and then reported it to Sony to get another $10,000 bounty rather than just posting a free commit to the free BSD source. So more than likely, this is probably nothing major to, to really take note of. Okay, so now we get into some of the bad news. And this is a pretty big blow for the PlayStation hacking community. And that is the fact that CTERT himself is stepping down from the scene. He has put out this um, Twitter thread here that goes into, well, not really any detail on why he's actually leaving the scene. So I'm not going to bother speculating on that because it could be for who knows why. But as you can see here, he says that for a variety of reasons, it's time for me to move on from the PlayStation hacking scene. I'm very thankful to have met some great people through this hobby over the years and for the boost it's given my security career. 
some of the highlights for me were being the first to publicly hack the PS4 kernel by porting over an existing bad IRET exploit or bad IRET exploit without any kernel dump. So first person to be able to do that, which is a pretty big deal back in 2015. And then also looking for PS4 slash free BSD kernel vulnerabilities and successfully finding and exploiting his first zero day. And also free DVD boot, defeating the copy protection of my childhood console, the PS2, to allow unmodified consoles to run burned discs or either retail games or unofficial homebrew games. This was a big deal in the PlayStation 2 hacking community when free DVD boot uh, was released and this is the guy who did it right here, Seaturt. And then also, of course, the Mastercore exploit, the first public PS4 and PS5 user land exploit targeting a game instead of part of the operating system, making it the only one still unpatched on the latest firmware versions. And that's, of course, the Mastercore exploit that I've done numerous videos on already pretty recently. And then we also have working with the PlayStation team through the bug bounty program and successfully being awarded several 10k bounties. And a lot of these bounties are still undisclosed. So who knows, hopefully one of them, at least one of them will be disclosed at some point. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, this is a huge blow to the PlayStation scene. Obviously, there are other um, hackers like Seaturt who are still in the scene. There's people like Spectre, there's Slayers Gorvi, there's Null Pointer and more. But uh, yeah, Seaturt, as you can see by his achievements, was definitely a very, very valuable member of this scene. And unfortunately, he is leaving. Um, unfortunately, I forgot to mention the flow. How could I forget to mention the flow? Um, but yeah, so as you can see, Seaturt, very valuable member of the community and is unfortunately leaving. Uh, so yeah, I'm very sad to see him go. And of course, I'm sure uh, me, like everybody else, very much appreciates his contributions to the scene because as you can see, they are pretty significant here. Now, one of the major um, downsides to this in the immediate term is the Mastercore exploit, because we only had part one of the Mastercore exploit that was actually uh, released. And he was working on a second part, which, you know, had the potential to be able to sideload other PS4 apps. Because right now with Mastercore, with the first part, we can only sideload PS2 games on the latest firmware for PS5 and PS4s. Um, however, there was the opportunity of it being able to also sideload native apps like PlayStation 4 apps, like maybe games or, you know, PlayStation 4 homebrew, PlayStation 4 emulators, stuff like that using the Mastercore exploit. And that looks like it may never get finished, that research. So I, I'm not sure where the comment is on Twitter here, but I did see somebody actually asking Seaturt. If I find it in editing, I'll put it up. But uh, yeah, somebody asked Seaturt about that second part of the Mastercore exploit and what's going to happen with that if he's stepping down from the scene. And he basically said that it was incomplete. He was about halfway done with the second part of that research. And he said he may just release it anyway, which sounds like he's not going to continue the rest of that research. Um, so that is really unfortunate to see. Hopefully he does release what he's discovered so far so that maybe some other hackers in the scene can take that further. But uh, yeah, that's a real blow uh, to the Mastercore exploit if we never get that second part, uh, which is the kind of crucial second part that could really elevate the exploit to, uh, you know, being much more useful. So yeah, very, very sad to see Seaturk go there. So continuing the bad news, this is a little bit less bad news, but still bad news all the same. And that is that the Zippy Share file hosting site is shutting down. As you can see here, it says we plan to shut down the site at the end of the month back up all your important files. More information is available on our blog. Um, now, the reason why this is a big deal is because ZippyShare is one of the major hosting sites that's used for PS4 fake packages. So a lot of the fake package downloads are hosted on ZippyShare. So we're going to probably lose a lot of stuff here when we lose ZippyShare, as well as other, of course, you know, PS4 applications. A lot of stuff was hosted there. So make sure if you have been using any ZippyShare links, if you have posted anything to ZippyShare, make sure you back up that data or repost it on another file sharing site before ZippyShare shuts down because it is going to be shutting down at the end of March, which is pretty soon. So yeah, make sure you have everything backed up and uh, make sure you have anything downloaded that you want to download from ZippyShare before it's gone. Um, I have seen a lot of people say like, oh, ZippyShare never works for me. For some reason, it's blocked in the UK. If you're in the UK and you try to go to ZippyShare, it will just give you a blank page or a 404 not found or something like that. So you need to be using like a proxy or a VPN anyway to access the site. 
if you're in a country like mine. But, you know, still, it's it, I always liked Zippy Share because of the speed that you would get when you downloaded through Zippy Share. Even when I was connecting through a VPN, I would st still get much higher speeds than I would get when downloading files from other file sharing sites. So Zippy Share was definitely one of the good ones where you didn't have to pay for like a premium subscription to get good, you know, transfer rates. So yeah, that's unfortunate that Zippy Share is going to be shutting down there soon as well. So the last thing that I want to cover here real quick is a update to the Mastercore exploit. For one, we can now load config files when we send our PS2 ISOs over the network to better set up the emulator to work with the particular ISO that we're loading. We were able to do this with the USB loader as well, but now we have access to this with the network game loader too when you're actually sending the ISOs over the network. So that's available. But the main thing I wanted to talk about real quick here is the primitive shell server for the PS4 or PS5 that uses the Mastercore exploit. Um, so this is by Aladi or Aladai. Um, and you can see here that this is pretty handy because what you can do is you can use Telnet uh, with port 9030. If you're using PuTTY, you will have to set the uh, protocol to RAW instead of Telnet in order for it to connect. So you can just connect up with PuTTY and then you basically get access to the sandbox directory of your PS4 or PS5. So you can list your files and folders that are in the sandbox directory. You can move files from one location to another, copy files. You can also you know, rename files. Although of course, some of most of the directories are read only, um, but there is a directory in the AV contents folder. So AV contents and then content underscore TMP that folder you can write files to. So you can copy files there. You can also download files from the sandbox directory directly to your computer with the download command. And you can even upload files. So you can upload things like PS2 ISOs to the AV contents content temp directory. And then you can execute them on the actual PS4 or PS5 with the play command to actually run that ISO. And also you can do things like, you know, send notifications as well. Uh, so quite a few things that you can do there. I may do a dedicated video on this in the coming days. And, you know, there are potential upgrades to this coming soon. As you can see, there are next steps for support for transmission of uh, file name and file name extensions, as well as support for the transmission of multiple files and directories and uh, more commands like being able to make directories and the ability to copy and move directories because right now you can only do it with files. So it is very primitive at the moment, but still pretty cool. So thought I would mention it here at the end of the video. So yeah, that's pretty much all I've got here for this update. It's pretty unfortunate that, of course, CTURT is stepping down. We've got Zippy Share shutting down. We don't have any sort of major news about new jailbreaks on the horizon. And uh, yeah, some of the old rumors about having like a 2.50 hypervisor exploit, none of that seems to have surfaced. So yeah, not, not particularly great. But hey, we have Resident Evil 4 Remake available for current jailbreaks. So that's something. But uh, yeah, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll hopefully see you guys in a more positive note in the next video.